This is just a typical day spent at home with my children, homeschooling and, you know, completing all of my normal daily tasks while also cooking three square meals from scratch. So I'm going to take you along with me and just kind of show you my workflow throughout the day. We are getting started bright and early as usual. And if you notice, there is another little guy here in the background. One of my cousins is having another baby, so I'm keeping her little guy for a couple of days while she has the baby and just the initial, you know, couple of day recovery period until they can get home and get settled in. So, you know, I'm used to having a lot of kids around. My kids are home with me all day, every day, so it's really not that big of a deal to just add one more in. So I'm gonna get my morning coffee going. You know, I know it's pumpkin spice season, but this chocolate collagen is really, really good if you whip it in with your cream and a little maple syrup in your coffee. Just fabulous, such a treat. So this was actually Monday morning and my homeschool planning, that is something that I do either Sunday night or early Monday morning. It honestly just depends on our weekend. If we have the opportunity to do something really fun and spend time with family all day Sunday and just be out and about, or just, you know, doing fun family stuff all day Sunday, I'm not gonna stress about getting my weekly planning done. I'll just do it early in the morning and it always works out. It doesn't take me that long. It may, maybe takes me 10 to 15 minutes to just flip through everybody's uh, books and kind of reevaluate what we got finished the week before, check on what we will be learning in the coming week that is new and make out my lesson plan. Now you see there that I was checking on uh, my little guy uh, had a bandage on his wrist and that is because we had a sort of freak accident over the weekend. Um, it was it was actually pretty scary it, and I, I don't, I'm not gonna say too much more because you know, health <laughs> details, privacy issues and stuff like that, but it was just a freak accident that, that was really scary and required going to the hospital emergently and uh, getting quite a few stitches, but praise the Lord, everything is okay. And you know, that is just part of life with kids, especially if you're not going to keep them locked in a closet all the time. If you let them play and run and, you know, do different things, they're going to get hurt. And it's, it's always scary. But like I said, praise the Lord, he's fine. So I'm taking pictures here of the little guys trying to keep my cousin updated with pictures of her sweet guy, because I know she was missing him. She was texting me saying, oh, I feel so guilty. But you know, when you're giving birth, Certain settings are just not ideal to have a little toddler running around and I'm so happy that she was able to focus on having her baby and um, my kids really enjoy having the company as well. So it's like I said, just no problem at all. Okay, what I'm holding here is something new. This is a silicone bread mat. I have seen people bake sourdough with these and you know, I was just intrigued. Obviously, I don't mind using parchment paper, and it's, parchment paper is really pretty for your aesthetic if you're doing photography of your bread, but this is really nice because they're reusable. So this is the first time I'm going to be trying this little baking mat, and I'm curious to see, you know, once my bread expands in my uh, bread oven, uh, you know, if it sticks to the sides or anything without the parchment paper coming up around the sides, we'll just have to see. Now... I'm trying this out because I was going through my fridge this morning and I found this dough in a banneton basket shoved in the back of the fridge. It's at least a week old, maybe older. So you can kind of see that it doesn't have the best shape. It's losing its shape a little bit. But when I originally made it, which who knows when that was, like I said, maybe a week or more ago, the um, starter was strong and the dough was good and everything. So even if it doesn't have the prettiest shape, it will be fine. So while that is baking in the oven, and by the way, I have tutorials on making a closed crumb beginner's loaf, an open crumb artisan loaf. Just go back in my, um, you know, some of my recent videos and I'll, I'll link them in the description as well. So while that is baking, I'm gonna head outside and collect eggs because that has been neglected the last couple of days. We have so many chickens, a lot of chickens, 30, 40, more, who knows. But you know, they're getting old and I got new chickens this year and I hatched some new ones, but they're not laying just yet. So we're not getting that many eggs. It's kind of depressing, you know, you get spoiled when you have lots of eggs coming in all the time and then 
now we maybe get two or three a day, which we go through a lot more than that. So I'm going out to see if I can find any eggs, checking on the cows, checking on everybody while not here. This little guy here is a steer. He's a full-blooded Jersey steer. We just castrated him and we're gonna feed him out for beef. We have uh, eaten our Jersey beef before and it was great. We really couldn't tell the difference between the Jersey and the Angus. You know, we, we grass feed, feed it and finish it with just a little bit of grain and it was just fabulous. In fact, you'll see a roast later on in this video that comes from a Jersey uh, steer. And it's so, so tender. So just showing you some of my ladies there and my pretty roosters. Like I said, they're getting up there in years. They're slowing down with laying, but I've got some young ones coming up to replace them. So I climbed all the way up on a hay wagon. I was about, or this is a straw wagon. I was about ready to give up on my egg hunt, but I did find a, few, a little pile of eggs out there. So that's always good. I got my buddy Howie who follows me everywhere. Great Pyrenees are truly the best dogs, like the best farm dogs. So, you know. If you have any amount of property, if you have chickens, definitely look into Great Pyrenees. Now that I have my eggs, I can go ahead and make breakfast. And I have a couple other things that I want to make that I needed the eggs for. So I'm just going to do my sourdough discard pancakes. This is like one of the oldest recipes on my blog. And um, it's just a old faithful for us. You can make the batter and let it, you know, uh, ferment overnight but I never do. I always just make it the morning of and I add in baking powder and baking soda that act as a leavening agent since it didn't have, you know, it doesn't sit and ferment and they're just so, so good. Nice and fluffy, a good classic pancake. So I'm getting ready to pull out this little narrow drawer, cabinet slash drawer to my right here, which is my spice cabinet, spice drawer, whatever you want to call it. It is so handy. I love the placement of this. You know, when we built this house, we had already redone a house prior to this. So I learned a lot doing that. And I can't say that I regret too much. There are some things that I would change, but overall the layout, especially the kitchen layout, I really do love. Now, believe it or not, our kitchen is still not finished. I've showed you guys a couple areas in the kitchen where there's some built-in shelving that was supposed to be done and... Some things happened with subcontractors to where we had to just uh, ask them to not finish and just settle up. And it just never got done. Here we are six years later. But one of these days, uh, the kitchen will be finished. All right, my um, pancake batter is just about to finish here. Going to take the lid off. And you know what? This loaf doesn't look too bad. It didn't, yeah, I didn't get the oven spring I would have hoped for, but I got a little bit of an ear. So for a week, old, you know, week old dough, it's not that bad. All right, I'm gonna spread some butter on my griddle here. This is the key to making good pancakes is you really want to, well, I use cast iron for everything, but you know, so I'm biased, but I really think cast iron pancakes are far superior. So you wanna grease it up really well, whether that is with butter or baking grease or whatever you use, coconut oil, just grease it up really well in between every batch of pancakes. Now, my children, uh, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that I spoil them. I'm not one to spoil. In fact, if I err at all, it's probably a little bit in the other direction of making sure that I don't spoil. And just because I think we live in such a materialistic, entitled, culture and age it's something we have to be mindful of we live a very easy life in this country and you have to tr like try not to spoil your kids but anyway this is one area i do spoil them a little bit by taking orders at breakfast and making them all their you know pancakes with their favorite toppings so i've got one that requested blueberries and that's my favorite too if i'm going to put something in my pancakes it's going to be probably either bananas or blueberries I don't know, one of my favorite things is dark chocolate chip with bananas and chopped pecans. That is just so fabulous. And then if you make like a bananas foster glaze to go over top of it and some fresh whipped cream, you will probably have a very high blood sugar. That's not low calorie at all, but oh, it's so good. But anyway, we're, we're not gonna get that fancy today. So child number two requested chocolate chip pancakes, which that is easy enough. And my timer is going off, so we're gonna check out this loaf here. And like I said, mainly I wanted to test out this 
bread baking mat see how it does in a dutch oven well this is my my uh prized aldi bread oven so it looks it actually looks pretty good like i said didn't get that oven spring since this dough was old but as you can see there was just a little bit of uh, residue left on the bread oven but it worked great so i am now a fan of the bread mat i'll link it in the description below for you guys i did end up cutting into this loaf a little bit later and i made some toast with garlic you know i i've told you guys i eat fresh garlic every day as part of a protocol to prevent um group beta strep so yeah i made some toast with what did i put on there spicy mayo avocado garlic and something else it was so good i've been on a kick with that lately and um that bread worked great for that so child number three wanted a mix of choc dark chocolate and white chocolate chips and this was my last custom order because the little babies uh you know they can't talk yet <laughs> well at least not that much they can talk but <laughs> not enough to give me custom orders so this was what we had for breakfast we just had pancakes which usually i would do eggs or some kind of meat on the side but i didn't have any meat thought out and i only have a few eggs and i need to reserve them from what i'm going to make next so you know it was just pancakes and we had some fruit on the side just a simple breakfast and that is that sometimes that just has to be okay because that's what it is so right now i am going to make some sourdough muffin batter and then i'm gonna put it in the fridge until tomorrow so i'm preparing breakfast now <laughs> for tomorrow that way it's ready to go these will eventually be sourdough blueberry muffins with a streusel topping and a glaze and i made them before they're just really really good but i'm just gonna go ahead and get this ready now and that's one last thing that i've got to do tomorrow this full recipe all of the recipes that i share today will be in the description for you guys as always i always share recipes in detail in the description you know told you before too long within the next couple months my blog will be back up and running and up to date with all like so all the recipes that i share here will be on the blog as well which is just handy sometimes if you want a printable version or if you're searching for something there isn't really a search function on youtube that allows you to go back through and search my videos by recipe i do usually post reels that have each recipe but it, it's just still not easy to organize those there's without the search function like that so i'm pretty excited to get the blog up and running now i'm sharing my secrets with you here when you make muffins muffin batter is very thick it should be very thick and when you find a good muffin batter you like just keep that as your base recipe and then modify it with whatever add-ins and toppings you want so this is my muffin recipe it is my go-to muffin recipe right now i'm just replenishing my starter since i just used it for pancakes and i used it for the muffin batter and i'm going to try to find some time to start some bread later on so it's pretty chilly it, uh, the cold weather has definitely hit us now i'm gonna go ahead and put my starter here in my proofer you know that's another great way to use these these uh, proofing boxes is if you need your starter active in a short amount of time and your house is really chilly you know cold weather baking with sourdough you need to account for that temperature if your house is not as warm as usual things are going to take longer sometimes they'll take a lot longer so it's just a handy little tool that you will see on my countertops quite often. I did get a grocery order this morning. I actually put it in last night. So my Sunday, even though we spent most of the day with family and I didn't get all of my planning and prepping done that I usually would have, which is why I'm doing a lot of stuff this morning, I did get a grocery order in. And I did make my weekly to do and daily to-do lists for the week. So that counts for something. It did give me a head start. The groceries were here you know shortly after breakfast so we are moving it right along here just tidying the kitchen as i go refilling my canisters these canisters are things that i use most often i have all-purpose flour i have sugar i have my coffee grounds and my rye flour which the rye i 
feed a little bit to my starter every time I feed it. So I just keep it out. It's nice and handy. Now my sister and her kids just got here. So that's who I'm talking to. <laughs> you can see me talking to her in the background. So I'm going to make lunch. We've got lots of little ones running around and I meant to film the lunch process. If you watched my video last week, then you will see that I shared my recipe for my favorite sandwich bread and that's what I use to make this grilled cheese. I do these, uh, if you want to call it a charcuterie board, just snack boards a lot for lunch because it's really fun for the kids. It doesn't take a lot of time and effort, but it's still aesthetically pleasing and allows me to make sure that I am, you know, getting a little bit of a variety on their lunch plates. And it just goes over so well every time, especially when I have other kids over. Now, I'm just going to keep it moving here right after we ate lunch. I'm going to go ahead and prep dinner for tonight. I'm making roast, so I need to get that going now because it takes several hours roasting in the oven. And yes, that's a fresca. That is my guilty pleasure. I really love fresca. I know it's not that good for you, but it's just the little cans and it's so just refreshing. I can't do like a second cup of coffee in the afternoon. And yes, I know there are healthier pick-me-up drinks, but I just like it. All right, I'm prepping my roast to roast in my huge Dutch oven over there. I was going to use my Instant Pot, but I can't find the little um, gauge weight that goes on top of it. So we're just going to do it old school. And in fact, I actually prefer going old school. I, I just think that the roast turns out better. A lot of this, a lot of stuff the Instant Pot's are great for. An Instant Pot roast is really good. I've done it many, many times. But there's something special about slow roasting. Now, when you roast beef, you want to sear it first. So I season with salt and pepper very generously, as you can see here. So I'm doing the first side that's going to get roasted uh, or seared. And I had oil heating up in my Dutch oven over there. So then I'm just going to place those sides down here in the Dutch oven, let them roast on high, get nice and brown. And while those sides are roasting, then I'm going to season the other sides just like I did before with salt and pepper. Now you might be thinking, wow, lady, that is a lot of salt. Well, it is a lot of salt, but that's a lot of meat right there. That is two huge roasts. We are a two roast family. And yes, this is a very well loved Dutch oven. This is maybe my oldest Dutch oven. I don't know how many quarts it is, but it's a really, really big one and I cannot part with it. It's so handy. I could probably get out my barkeeper's friend and scrub it really well and get it clean, but I just don't have that in me. This pretty much gets used for only roasts and sometimes I use it for making bone broth. So I'm going to let that sear while I prep my veggies. I'm gonna make this really easy, just carrots, celery. I'm gonna do a whole onion my onions from this year's spring garden are still looking so fabulous. I have a video on that that I will link up in the in the corner in cards if you want to go see my process of growing onions for an entire year. I mean, it's just so worth it. It's a huge onion crop, but if you cook from scratch every day, then that's like a staple. You're going to use probably a whole onion every day because it just goes in everything. My roast is steaming pretty well over there, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. And look at that. It's just seared perfectly nice and brown. And that is really going to help the moist help the uh, meat retain moisture and prevent it from drying out once I start the slow roasting process in the oven. So these are really thick roasts. I'm standing them up on their sides to make sure that I sear the sides as well. And now that they're all seared, I have some garden potatoes that were stored in the basement. I went down, grabbed those, washed those off, and they're all pretty small, so I didn't even cut them. I just put them in whole. Now I've got the rest of my veggies. I'm just going to add those in here, and this is going to be a tight fit. Um, you know, we just recently became a two roast family. We've been a one roast family for a long time. But as our kids grow, you know, my oldest son is 12. Well, he, he's almost 12. 
it's just an adjustment. That is a lot more food. And I almost forgot a crucial ingredient here, which is garlic. And I have so much garlic that I need to make sure I'm using it as much as possible. I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm just going to smash several whole garlic cloves and put them in just like that. And that's one of my favorite things is roasted garlic cloves. I like to pick them out and just eat them whole. And I've got a quart of beef broth that I had canned. Just pulled that out of the pantry. And I'm adding in some extra garlic and onion powder. Probably add in a little bit of smoked paprika too. Just for a little bit more flavor. Then I'll shake this up and pour this over my roast. As long as the liquid mostly covers the meat, then I'll be good to go. I don't want liquid to come all the way up the sides of my Dutch oven because then once it starts bubbling in the oven, you know, it will run over the sides and there would be smoke billowing out of my oven. Smoke alarms will go off and it just won't be good. <laughs> all right, we're ready to go here. I'm going to slow roast this at 275 for like four or five hours. So it'll roast for quite a while. Then I'll check on it, make sure it's tender, and we will be good to go. Now while I do that, I got the little babies down for a nap. So I am going to open up a few new things that I got for me. These are early Christmas presents that I'm very, very excited to start using. This is a new tripod. As far as photography equipment goes, I've had the same stuff for a really long time, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and a lot of it still works, but it's really wearing down, and my tripod is one of those things. I mean, it's like, no pun intended, on its last leg. <laughs> that was very cheesy, and I did not mean for that to sound like a bad joke, but it does. So I went ahead and splurged. I got this tripod that's supposed to be one of the best, and I'm trying to figure it out here, make sure that it all works and that I know how to use it. I am hoping I can take some time this week to figure all of my new stuff out and start filming with it and start using it by next week. I also got an early Christmas present, which is something I'm very, very excited about. So, I got myself a really, really nice camera. My first, you know, good camera, nice camera, my first DSLR, I got over 10 years ago when I was pregnant with my daughter. And it was, you know, it, it's nice, but it's way under the thousand dollar mark. So definitely more of a beginner's camera, but I have used that thing for 10 years now. I'm not filming on it. I still use it, but I'm actually filming on just a little, vlogging camera, which is also well under the thousand dollar mark. So I have never really, really splurged on photography equipment. Everything that I have had up until this point is very basic. And that's a good thing because I've just been learning and practicing and I see, you know, a lot of times people can go all in and buy all the nicest equipment thinking, oh, I'll get around to learning how to use it. I'll teach myself to use it. And they don't do it. And then they invested in the equipment and it's just sitting there. So I have taken 10 years to prove to myself that I will use my photography equipment. I've learned how to use it all and now I'm definitely ready for this upgrade. So this is going to be a learning curve. I don't totally know what to expect from this bad boy, but I'm so, so excited. It's got everything that I want. It is, this has been on my wish list for like three years, but I just haven't been able to pull the trigger. So it's uh, mirrorless. This is a must for making videos and, um, you know, shooting, blog photography, stuff like that. And honestly, there are so many features on here that I haven't even checked out yet because I'm still waiting for the battery to arrive. So I have the camera body, I have the mount kit here to adapt to my lenses. So I have Canons. I have three or four really nice Canon lenses that I use with my starter camera, my little Canon Rebel. And those will work with this still. I just needed the adapter. So I've got these two pieces. I'm waiting on the battery in the charger and I just can't wait to start 
playing around with this thing and creating content with it. So I'm actually just curious to see what it looks like side by side because I actually really like the camera I have now, but I just use it a lot more than I think what it's built for. So the camera that I'm filming on right now that I've always used, I'm going to reserve as a vlogging camera when I'm like outside or out and about. And then I'm going to use this full time in my house. So I'm just excited to see the lighting and the quality and hopefully there is a noticeable improvement. I will link my Amazon storefront in the description of this video. So right now I have a list. I, I don't know what it's called. Maybe it's called photography supplies or blogging supplies, YouTube supplies, something like that. But it has everything that I own on there from my beginner's camera to this one I just bought to my vlogging camera. Uh, the basic tripod that I have used for years and years, and then this new really nice one that I just got. Everything that I own is on there, and I need to go through that list and put little notes on every product and note which ones that I started with and which ones I waited to invest in. Because once again, I think, you know, when you're just getting started, whether it's just for personal photography, just to be able to take pictures and videos of your family, or whether you want to actually do professional photography, whether it's, you know, weddings or family photos or food or blogging, vlogging, anything like that, it's a really good idea to start with the basics. Like don't go all in and invest a ton of money right away because you can actually start making a little bit of money and then use that to reinvest in nicer equipment. And that is what I did. I waited until this paid for itself. So I had to wait a little while, but it was worth the wait. So I will link all of my favorite products in my Amazon storefront in the description. The babies took a nice long nap. I got so much done this afternoon, just little tidying stuff around the house. And my roast was done in about four hours. So it's so nice, you know, making something like this that you can start at either in the morning or after lunch and then just walk away and when supper time comes it's ready and you don't have that rush you know you're not you know babies hungry babies clinging to your leg you know waiting to eat and you're rushing trying to finish things up sometimes that's just the reality of it but when you have a meal ready in advance it's, it's a very nice thing so look at this roast it's so so tender and I promise you it was very, very flavorful as well. But this came from a Jersey steer. So, you know, we have been very, very pleased with, with that so far. All right. So that was our supper. That was, you know, our food for one whole day that you just saw. Now we are fast forwarding to the next morning. I had made that sourdough uh, muffin batter and put it in the fridge. So I have that ready to go. I actually slept in a little bit. Both of the, the little guys that I, my little guy and my cousin's little guy slept in too. So I thought, why not? I don't sleep in that often. And I knew I had breakfast mostly ready. So I did make the streusel topping, which was really easy. That was just butter, flour, sugar. The recipe will be in the description. <laughs> now I'm getting my blueberries ready. You definitely don't have to toss them in flour, but it just keeps your dough from turning completely blue, which is really nice if you want pretty pictures, like if you want them to look really pretty and be able to see your blueberries clearly. Now, since I had little guys underfoot and I was kind of distracted, I actually forgot to put my blueberries in my batter, but all is well. I will just add them in now and no one will know the difference. It'll be just fine. You can usually, you know, salvage most things and, and fix most mistakes in the kitchen. Now I'm spooning my um, streusel topping over my muffins and then they will be ready to bake. While they are baking, I'm going to make the glaze, which is very simple. It's just powdered sugar and a little bit of cream. Now, since my cows are both dry because of them both accidentally getting bread at the same time, I do not have any fresh cream. I think I might survive, but it's it's been pretty tough. No, I'm just kidding. I, I do miss it a lot, but <laughs> it is what it is. So I've got my, my glaze made up here and ready to go. My muffins are ready. Now, I just got these um, washable, silicone muffin 
tins? Well, they're not tin. Muffin liners? Gosh, I'm just spacing here on what to call these. Little muffin things. And <laughs> that's what they are. And they even had them in this cute blue color, which is my color. That's like my blue. And I was curious to see if they would work. You don't have to spray them at all. You don't have to coat them with anything. They're just supposed to be totally non-stick. So we'll check that out here in a minute. Just drizzling my glaze over these. And oh my goodness, they're so good. You know, a lot of baked sourdough goods, you can taste. They just taste sour. They taste really sour. These do not. They are very, very delicious. And you really wouldn't know that there was starter in there. So the silicone muffin liners, muffin cups, maybe that's what they're called worked great. They totally lived up to expectations. Totally non-stick. They washed really well. It came clean very easily, so I'm, I'm pleased with those. Um, and I, I'm glad because I bought 48 of them. <laughs> Obviously, I had to te taste test this first one, you know, to make sure it's not poison or anything, and it was not poison. It was delicious. I'm going to get another batch going and call the kids in shortly for breakfast. And for myself, I'm not going to eat more muffins for breakfast. That one is enough for me. I'm just going to make myself some avocado toast loaded with fresh garlic and black olives. Sorry to offend you if you're not a black olive fan, but that way I get my garlic in for the day and don't overdo it on the sweet stuff. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching again this week. Everything I showed you today will be in the description of this video. I will see you all next week.